Jess and it's Sunday here on Gender Queer Chat. Uh, this week's topic is gender and ability and disability. Um, this was a hard topic for me. I felt really ill-equipped to, uh, to do much commenting on this topic, but I knew that I was going to feel like a total asshat if I came out here and I was like, oh, I'm ill-equipped for this, so I don't have anything to say. Because it's really an important topic, and just because I'm not well-informed doesn't mean that it I shouldn't be and that I uh, shouldn't have something to say. I've been friends and even lovers of genderqueer people, and I've been friends and even lovers of disabled people, but my Venn diagrams don't seem to overlap so much, so I feel kind of at a loss on, um, on what I've thought about those two subjects overlapping. I guess I just worked from my own, own experience and I thought about myself as um, a, a member of a minority population and one of the things that irritates me the most is just having other people not uh, of my experience speak for me. So I figured I would go do some research, Google, and uh, read what um, disabled people differently able people, however you want to say it, are, are saying about gender and um, disability. Um, one of the ways that we express ourselves as genderqueer people to others is uh, through our appearance, the way we dress and how we groom ourselves. One of the things that struck me about the articles I read in my own personal experience is how disability can complicate these issues. So I'm going to leave you with some links of some articles that I found. Uh, I wanted to read an excerpt from one because it particularly struck me, so... A blogger who goes by the name Cryptchick says, In the comment section of that post, BFP tells another person she reads me as a total femme. I don't know if other people would be as delighted as I was, but my natural reaction was the immense need to take that as a compliment. With disability being understood as such an asexual thing, no one ever affirms me even having a gender. The traditional disability narrative puts me in this place of being something else, that if gender was a binary, I'd be a, in a third gender realm. My friend Mia has the perfect example of this, bathroom symbols that have the man, woman, and then wheelchair. Our bodies are objects that are not supposed to belong to us, and by recognizing our genders, it implies that we own our bodies, think about them, take pleasure in them. Maybe this is a big jump, but to me, affirming our gender also recognizes our personhood. It says we are human and have a right to not have our bodies raped, abused, sterilized, experimented on, harvested, and more. I was really struck by what Kripchik had to say just because we're here talking about genderqueer issues and she's saying that um, as a disabled person she feels that she doesn't even have access to any gender, let alone um, one different than that she was assigned. Um, it reminded me of an experience I had growing up. I um, a little backstory. I stopped going to school sometime during my senior year because of uh, depression and because of coming out and the intersection of the two things. Um, in my hometown there was also another uh, woman a few years younger than me who stopped going to school around the same time. She has a muscular dystrophy and she uses a wheelchair uh, and is also named Jess as all the most awesome people in the world tend to be. And um, since we had both dropped out of the world, we uh, ended up becoming pretty quick friends. And one time she confided in me um, her frustration with her mother not letting her shave her legs because she didn't have the, the muscle control in order to not cut herself badly doing so. Um, it, it just struck me as odd at that time that I was fighting so hard against gender norms, I was still shaving my legs at that point, but feeling like I, I wished I didn't feel the societal pressure to do so, but here was someone who just um, wanted to be able to do the simple act that I was taking for granted and actually dreading. Um, it, it made me think. So yeah, anyway, in summary, uh, I think that disabled people have um, difficulties accessing their gender regardless of whether they're genderqueer, trans, or, or cisgendered. I also think it's part of our responsibility to let disabled people speak for themselves and have their own voice and to listen. Thanks for watching and have a great week. And the sign said long-haired freaky people need not apply. So I took my hero.